Tonight, I'm being joined by a former Speaker of the House of Representatives, Honorable Gali Naba, who is also a member and a chieftain of the National Consultative Forum. He joins us from Abuja. Thank you so much, uh, Honorable uh, Gali Naba. It's good to see you again. Let me begin by getting to uh, your view. Um, the APC, the PDP, these are perhaps Nigeria, some of the Nigeria's biggest political parties, the ruling party, and Nigeria's main opposition party. But the NCF appears to say they are a third force. Uh, what are you bringing to the table, first and foremost? Well, uh, Sean, I told your colleague since yesterday that I am no longer a member of the National Consult Consultative Forum, the NCF. Therefore, I cannot uh, speak in their behalf. So, I mean, uh, uh, apologies for that. So, but let, let's begin the conversation from your point of view on the state of the nation. So, speak to us about your view on the state of the nation. Uh, let's speak the economy, for example. You heard the Minister of uh, Trade and Investment who said the reason for the, for the ranking of Nigeria, uh, number 14, as it were, on the, the ranking for uh, the investment destination on the continent is because of uh, security. From your own standpoint, how do you hope that we can deal with the situation? Well, uh, so many things are wrong with the country, Shewin, but uh, there is a clear way to help solve those problems. And uh, what is worse is that uh, the, 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 the perception of the international community, of course, is that uh, there is no security in Nigeria and that... Uh, 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 investors who want to come uh, have been saying they want to come and invest, but uh, we have not been seeing anything. And uh, this is no doubt related to the way and manner that uh, the country is being governed. Uh, there is a lack of seriousness. Uh, the, uh, those in power are uh, still not yet ready to accept that they must mend their ways. Uh, we have lost it democratically because uh, those responsible for the preservation of democracy have been running around it instead of operating according to democratic tenets to the extent that uh, the immunity of the political system has broken down. And uh, unless we begin to take measures to bring about or to strengthen or to reclaim this immunity, uh, this country is going to continue to, 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 to drift. Uh, this is uh, a question, you know, for uh, consideration that once you see something drifting, and uh, we are definitely drifting, nobody will shy away from it. We must not shy away from the fact that the country is drifting because we want to satisfy the ego of certain people. We must say the truth and that uh, measures must be taken to arrest this drift. And that must begin by the political authorities from top to bottom. If security is a major problem and it's affecting the economy, uh, we've seen Kaduna, we've seen Zamfara, we've seen Sokoto uh, making, uh, taking eff uh, making efforts in uh, looking into 
breaking down communication from the bandits into, into the larger population of the society just to break their ranks such that they don't have the communication uh, to carry out their atrocity. Uh, first and foremost, we need to deal with the security, then be able to achieve more on uh, the issue of the economy. So first and foremost, what are we doing wrongly in tackling the issue of security? Or what, in your own view, should we be doing in arresting the insecurity situation? Well, my own, uh, my own take here is that uh, there has been so much misgovernance in the country. You know, from the federal government to the state governments to the local governments, there is a general state of misgovernance. There has been no good governance and uh, even the way we operate our political parties is not the way it is supposed to be. Because key to all of these things, in order for us to be able to bring about order in the country, is that we must, we must take very good care of our political parties. We must allow our political parties to grow. How do they grow? They grow by imposing order on the political parties. There must be uh, internal democracy. There must, be, there must be no imposition by those in control of the parties. And uh, there must be a situation where people are generally confident in our political parties. So the first issue is to tackle the issue of politics. Once we are properly organized, and uh, I believe that uh, uh, political parties are a lever or are levers for determining whether a polity is healthy or not. And uh, you will agree with me that since 1999, we have refused to allow our political parties to grow. And because they have not grown, the polity has not grown. Definitely the economy will not grow as a consequence. And uh, the issue of social development has also become contentious because we cannot grow socially unless there is political and economic order. And there is none. So I believe that uh, those in control of uh, the political parties must put their houses in order. They must accept that they have been wrong. They must apologize to Nigerians and they must change their ways. The alternative is for us to continue in this manner. And uh, of course, if they choose to continue in this manner, they are exposing us, they are exposing the country and uh, there is no way this country can continue to survive because no society, you know, survives on the altar of disorder. We are so disorganized and uh, there are reasons and these reasons are largely political and we must begin to look at these things as honestly as possible. Those in control must look at these issues as honestly as possible. The issue of security is subsidiary because security is, insecurity is brought about by <coughs> the social misgovernance <coughs> of society. It is the activities we do in a negative fashion that in the long run gather together and become security issues. So in order to, you know, obliterate any uh, sign of insecurity. We must behave properly. We must bring about within ourselves, you know, a good moral and social conduct. Now, Honorable Naba, uh, let, me, let me get you clearly. Are you blaming politicians or the political class for the insecurity situation in the country? Of course, the political class 
is largely responsible because uh, they are they are the governors, they are the president, they are the political party operators. So uh, if they have shown leadership, definitely we wouldn't have these security uh, issues in the country. Therefore, uh, I will not shy away from blaming the political class because I'm a politician. So, but, I mean, in, 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 the, in the real sense of it, so that <clears throat> Nigerians who are watching tonight will uh, have a clear mind of where the problem is and how we can go about resolving it. Um, first and foremost, when you are blaming the political class, is it an intentional act of perpetrating the insecurity situation or these are just incendiary or these are just incidental or perhaps they are based on their inaction or it's unknowing to them how uh, the insecurity situation had grown or there are specific uh, things that you can make reference to that has uh, uh, helped this insecurity to grow. Would you like to, uh, to expatiate on that? Well, the fact of the matter is that uh, a lot of people who happen to find themselves in positions of authority believe that uh, they can do anything and uh, get away with it. And uh, this is contrary to the theory of social organizations. I don't want to be uh, too uh, uh, technical, but I believe that uh, social organizations have what we call souls. They have a soul and uh, therefore they have life and uh, when you violate social organizations they have a way of retaliating because you are dealing with human lives you are dealing with human beings and therefore uh, it is not correct for these people to assume that they can do anything and get away with it and uh, over the last 20 years uh, people who happen to find themselves in governance have been doing whatever their hearts desire. And uh, therefore, they have brought society to a level that it has become totally disorganized, out of control, due to actions that border on corruption, misgovernance, and uh, uh, very, very unfortunately, uh, lack of commitment to the people. And, uh, because when, when you, <clears throat> for example, people. apologies to, to cut in, when you blame the political class for the growing insecurity in Nigeria, I mean, incidentally, you are a member of the political class. Uh, you, you rose to being number four uh, in the hierarchy of uh, political authority in Nigeria. And uh, you've explained all of these, and one wondered how, uh, when you explained that the political class have perpetrated all of these in Nigeria, how come this has happened and they have not been held accountable? Uh, from your own standpoint, why is this still ongoing and it still keeps happening and they're not held accountable? Well, uh, Sean, uh I told you that I am a member of the political class, of course, and uh, I was speaker of the House of Representatives. Uh, I don't know if you were around between 1999 and 2003, and uh, whether or not you follow events. It took the House of Representatives of which I was speaker to attempt to impeach a president over the issues bedeviling this country. So some of us did our best. But what happened was that the, 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 those in the executive arm and the leaders of our political party conspired together to ensure that they have subdued the legislature, and therefore nobody can check them. They have taken over 
uh, the, 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 the powers given to the people by our constitution in the, in the sense that uh, today those who are in control of our political parties, uh, our governors, and uh, successive presidents have been beneficiaries of this uh, political party misgovernance by governors. And uh, today, the legislature is populated mainly both at the federal and state levels by people who are nominated and not elected you know, by the governors. They are selected by the governors. And uh, unfortunately, uh, in this case, uh, the members of the legislature at the federal and state levels cannot bring the governors and the president to account. And therefore, you cannot emasculate the legislature and accept that things would go well in the country. Therefore, uh, for us to be able to reclaim our country, we must set our politics right. We must do whatever we can to reorganize our democracy, to make it operate according to the books. And uh, we must not right, be let running me, let around me ask, it. Uh, specifically now, if you have the power right now to fix things, with the benefit of your experience as a former House Speaker and your experience over the years seeing our democracy grow, what would you do differently or what would you do to fix things? Well, Sherwin, what I must do is to do things that will bring about the confidence of Nigerians in themselves and in the country. And uh, that when, once confidence is restored in the people, I think uh, 80 to 90 percent of the problem is being solved. What is happening today is that, and uh, this is uh, true about, uh, you know, and uh, development uh, in our countries that the individuals and the state have lost confidence in themselves. And uh, once confidence is restored, and there are many measures one can take in order for us to be able to restore confidence in the people. But once people believe that they cannot get what is due to them, unless they resort to self-help, then definitely that system is in trouble. And this is the kind of system we are running. Uh, we don't have the time for me to be able to analyze uh, most of the sectors that are important in this endeavor, but I believe that uh, we have to restore confidence by setting our politics right. Let us uh, do what is right. Let us do what is morally, socially right. Uh, once we begin to take these measures, uh, I believe that uh, confidence would gradually begin to, to return. If you, if, you, if you, as a consequence of the situation we are in today, you'll find out that uh, most, most things or most indices that are responsible for bringing about development uh, dilapidated in this country. The state of education is abysmal, for example. We must have an educated country. Look, go and, go, look, go and have a look at our primary schools, for example. Public primary schools, public secondary schools. See the, 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 the level of dilapidation of these schools. I visited my primary school uh, a few months ago. I, I, I shed a tears because not only the, not only uh, do they not have good 
teachers, well-trained teachers, and the physical structures, you know, even the flow, the flow on which the school children sit on today, because there is no furniture anyway. You know, it's bare. So, you see, we have to look at these things. Once you have, if you have visitors, for example, if you have uh, particular countries that want to attack us, for example, and uh, they'll go and visit our schools, you know, they'll just go back and, uh, and rest because they know that within a few years we'll collapse. I don't want to sound pessimistic, but this is what I have seen. And I must say it, there is right. no way we can keep engaging in self-denial. Honorable Galina Abba, former member of the House of Representatives, thank you so much for your time tonight. I appreciate it. Thank you very much.